Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at the biggest features and changes as part of the Windows 11 Moment 4 update and version 23H2. For clarification, Microsoft originally said that version 23H2 was going to include all the new features and changes, but then the company decided to push the new improvements as another Moment update, which is known as the uh, KV5030310. For version 22H2, first the update was available as an optional install on September 26, but then on October 10th, 2023, it becomes a mandatory update for all devices running Windows 11 version 22H2. And then before the end of 2023, the company plans to roll out another package to complete the upgrade with some leftover changes and then it will switch the version to 23H2. So technically the update KV5030310 is version 23H2 with fewer things. The company decided to use this approach to automatically push its new features because monthly updates are mandatory. Otherwise, users will have the option to skip the update, meaning that it will take more time for the company to roll out these important features. I know this is a longer intro, but I thought it was necessary the clarification. So now let's dive into the uh, biggest features and changes for version 23H2 and version 22H2. Without a doubt, the biggest feature that you're going to find on this new update for Windows 11, it's Copilot, which is the new chatbot experience that integrates Bing Chat and first and third party plugins. The chatbot appears on the right side of the screen when clicking the Copilot button on the taskbar, or you can also use the Windows key plus C keyboard shortcut. And as you can see, it appears docked on the right side and it will run uninstructed alongside other apps. For example, if I open File Explorer, you can see that Copilot would not overlay on top of other applications. Similar to being chat on the web, on mobile, and the AI experience that you're going to find on Microsoft Edge, Copilot will help you to get answers to complex questions and you can ask read writes, summarizations, and explain content without opening the browser. The chatbot can help you to take actions and change system settings. In addition, developers can integrate their apps into Copilot through the uh, Bean Chat plugins to build new experiences. I have created a video that dedicates to the best tips and tricks on how to use Copilot, and I will be leaving the link on the video description so you can go and check that out. As part of the uh, version 23H2 and the new update for version 22H2, another feature that is coming up is the new dynamic lighting. Dynamic lighting is actually a combination of settings that you will find on the settings app that makes makes it possible to manage lighting accessories on your computer without the need of third-party tools. We're talking about accessories like mice, keyboards, live strips. Currently, accessories regarding third-party apps and integrations are highly fragmented, and dynamic lighting will allow you effortlessly to set up and customize your devices with lights directly from the settings app. The new page is available in the personalization section as you can see right here. And the page allows you to turn on and turn off the feature. And then from here, you can change different settings like brightness and light effects, as you can see at the bottom. And if you use other effects like solid color or any other ones, uh, you will find also an option that makes it possible to match your lighting with the accent color of Windows 11. But that will depend on the actual effect that you're using. You may also find different settings such as the effect speed and others. You can also create your own color if that's something that you need to do. Also, developers can use the available APIs to control devices from the background and foreground through the page in the settings app that user can customize how they want to device to behave. Microsoft is also partnering with several manufacturers to implement dynamic lighting on Windows 11 23H2 and the update for version 22H2. And some of these companies include Acer, Asus, HP, HyperX, Logitech, Razer and Twinkly. Although showing apps with labels and not grouping them in the taskbar is not entirely a new feature, it is perhaps one of the uh, biggest changes coming back on version 23H2 and on the update for version 22H2. Once you download and install the new feature update on the taskbar settings, 
more specifically on the taskbar behaviors settings, you will find a new combined taskbar buttons and height labels. And that's going to be setting to always by default. And that basically keeps everything the same. But now you can change it to never, for example, and that will now show the label of the application and each instance will be in a different icon. As you can see right here that we have two instances of file explorer so now we have two different icons now if you choose the when task part is full then what's going to happen is that you're going to see the labels on the applications on the taskbar but if the taskbar start filling out and you don't have space the system will again group the apps and hide the labels also if you have a system with multiple monitors connected then the option to combine taskbar buttons and hide labels on other taskbar will become available so you can control how the buttons appear on those different taskbars. We are also getting a new version of File Explorer that while it retains the similar design, we're getting a new version that includes new and modern code. In this new version, you will find three main visual changes, including the new homepage, a new gallery view, and improvements to the interface. One of the things that you will notice immediately is the new header design, which now includes the navigation control next to the address bar and the commands now sit up under the address bar blending with the rest of the background instead of the header in addition the new in addition the buttons are also getting some visual treatments also there is a new spinning animation in the tab that will indicate that the location is loading and in the past when you enter a folder and it was taking some time you will see a green loading effect in the actual address bar but that's now gone you will also notice some visual changes but really minor on the home page and that's because the application now uses the windows ui library framework also if you are using windows 11 with a Azure Active Directory. You also get the new recommended section that, that brings recommendations with thumbnail support for different files stored in the cloud. File Explorer is also getting a new gallery page to view and manage images that you can customize to include different locations. And you can do that with this option right here and just go to manage collections and here you can add and remove different folders. The page includes a view similar to the one available in the Photos app, and that includes large thumbnails, rounded corners, and hiding the file name, and using a chronological sorting, as you can see right here on the right. In this feature update, there is a new details pane that offers more information and actions for a particular file, folder, or the drive you selected. Finally, on this feature update, you can drag a tab out of the group to convert that tab into another instance of File Explorer. It is also possible to drag it back in into the group. And one thing you're going to notice with this version of File Explorer is that it is really slow compared to the previous version just to drag a tab out of a group it takes a long time and now you can also drag it back in but you can see how much effort it takes to actually make it work and that's it that's a quick overview of what's new on file explorer for windows 11 version 23 h2 and for the newest update for windows 11 version 22 h2 another big addition on windows 11 is native support for additional archival formats so thus far you have been able to open and extract files from a zip folder but if you needed to extract files from different archival formats you needed to use a third party tool however that's no longer the case you can now open and extract different types of archival formats including tar rar and 7z so when you come across a archival format you can simply select it and just choose the extract all button and everything works as if you were extracting a zip folder so you have the wizard and select the destination to unpack the files 
and then just click the extract button. Not only you can extract the files, but you can actually double click the file and open and see its content. You can always right click, copy it and extract it that way if you're inside of the folder. As part of the October update for Windows 11 version 22H2 and version 23H2, you will notice that the disks and values settings has been updated with two new features. They're kind of similar. The first one is the ability to create and manage virtual disks with the create a virtual hard drive disk option. And this is the same as the experience that you will find on the computer management console that has been around for a long time. So from here, if you already have a virtual disk, you can attach it using this option right here, but you also get a wizard to create VHDs. From here, let's just create one, my VHDX. We're gonna choose a location, select that, and let's just use 10 gigabytes. And from here, you can choose between VHD and VHDX, and you can also choose the hard drive type, in this case, dynamic, and then just click the create button. And here we also get the option to initialize the disk. GPT, it's fine. Then we click the initialize button, complete the settings, and then we click format. And there is also advanced settings, but usually you don't need to use those. Now, if we go to the File Explorer app and then we go to this PC, we are going to see that we have our new virtual drive right here. Then we have the dev feature, which is similar to traditional hard drives. However, this feature allows developers to create virtual hard drives using the resilient file system that also combines Microsoft Defender technology for better security and performance. The one thing about using that drive is that you have to make the drive at least 50 gigabytes in size otherwise you won't be able to create the drive you can choose your settings similar to creating a regular virtual hard drive as you know as you create one you have the option also to initialize it and all is the same but now it just uses the resilient file system and as you can see we have it right here if we go to our properties we can confirm that it's using the refs file system furthermore if we open the security app we go to the settings and as you can see we have now the option to protect the dead drive another great addition to windows 11 is the new windows backup app the windows backup app offers a simple interface that allows you to backup your profile folders apps settings and credentials to onedrive so you have to make sure that you have enough space if you want to use this feature however these settings are not different from the ones available on the settings app. So if you go to the accounts Windows backup page, you will find the same settings and you can even manage your sync settings right here. This option allows you to choose what folder to backup to the cloud. If you already have those settings configured, when you go back to the app, you will notice that the status is going to look as backed up. One thing to notice about the Windows backup app it's that it's not like your traditional backup application. For example, you don't get an option to restore a specific app or setting. This app is meant to help you restore all your stuff on a new computer or a new installation. Yes, you can open the OneDrive folder and get one file, but you can just restore a specific app or setting. So if you wanted to restore all your stuff, you will get an option during the initial setup. And that's the only way to restore all your stuff. Now, even then the feature will not restore, for example, all your apps into the system. Instead, you will see the icons on the taskbar or the start menu. And then when you click them, the system will download download them again from the Microsoft Store and it will restore the settings. Now, if you have traditional desktop apps, then when you click the button, the browser is going to open into the page where you can download the installer to get the application again. Microsoft is also making this app as a system component, so there is not an option to uninstall it. And of course, you will need a Microsoft account in order to access the OneDrive storage to process the backup. Another feature, well, it's actually a change that is new to Windows 11 is the ability to find the Wi-Fi password from the settings app. You have been able to do this in the past. You have been able to do this in the past, but it was only available through control panel. So now you can go to the network and internet section. And then from the Wi-Fi settings, you can go to the manage known networks settings. And then 
selecting the network at the bottom of the page, you will find the new view Wi-Fi security key. When you click the B button, the password will be revealed. On Windows 11 version 22H2 and 23H2, Microsoft is also updating the value mixer experience. So now when you open the quick settings, you will see a new enhanced value mixer. The experience brings modern value mixers, allows you to quickly customize per app settings, as you can see right here. So now you don't have to open the settings up to control the volume for a specific app. In addition, Microsoft is adding the Windows key control B keyboard shortcut to open value mixer directly. And also Microsoft is making it easier to enable the Windows Sonic or Dolby Atmos experience if you have that feature on your computer. On this video, we're not going to go into the details of all the changes for the settings app. But one thing to notice is that now we have a new home page that includes new interactive cards representing the different device and accounts related settings grouped by commonly accessed functions. The number of cards will depend on the features available on your computer and the recommendations will be based on how you use the settings app. So for example, here we get the some recommended settings that Windows wants us to change. You also get some cloud storage information and a quick way to change the personalization on your computer by changing the theme or even the color mode with the option right here. Quick access to turn on and off Bluetooth. And of course, you're always going to get Microsoft trying to get you into using their services. After installing the October update for Windows 11 version 22H2 or version 23H2, another thing that you're going to notice is that the operating system is improving the passkey experience. And on the accounts section, you will not find a new passkey settings that allows you to view and delete different passkeys that you created for different online accounts or applications that support this technology. So basically passkeys are token that you can create on a specific application or website to access that service without a password. For example, if you want to create a passkey for your Google account, you will go to your Google account, access the passkey settings, and then just click the create button and that will connect to the Windows Hello feature on Windows 11 in this case, and it will create a key. And then the next time you want to sign in into Gmail or any of the products from Google that requires a Google account, then you only have to authenticate with a pen or face or fingerprint, depending on the configuration that you have on Windows Hello. And that's unique only to one device. So if you have another Windows device or your phone, you will need to create a new passkey. And on Windows 11, you can only use passkeys with Microsoft Edge or Chrome at this time. And there you have it. These are the biggest features and changes available on Windows 11 version 22H2 after installing the October 2023 update or after upgrading to version 23H2. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.